All right, moving on to Dig That Cat, He's Real Gone. Uh, this was directed by Richard Donner from the Lethal Weapon franchise. The Lethal Weapon franchise is perfect, okay? All four films are amazing. I don't want to hear nobody disagreeing with me on that. Although you're entitled to your own opinion. <laughs> Obviously. Um, one of the guys in this is Knox from Batman, which that's the only thing. I mean, as I say in all these videos, like this, there's characters an actor plays and they're just that character forever. And this guy is Knox from Batman. Um, and then we have Joe Pantaleone, Leona, whatever. And this is Cypher from The Matrix, the character, one of the, one of the, you know, characters that betrays his friends, but I totally understand why he does it. I love his explanation of like, if you would have told us what this was really going to be like, we would have told him to shove that fucking red pill right up his ass. And I agree with him completely. It sucks on the outside. I think people should stay in the matrix. Ignorance is bliss, just like he says when he eats that steak. I completely agree with you. Who the hell wants to live in that freaking underground, you know, down by the center of the earth? Like, fuck out of here. Never live there. Jesus Christ. Anyway, moving on. We're not talking about The Matrix, but because I don't have a, a, a normal film channel, I have to try to sneak in little bits of non-horror discussion within my horror discussion, so I probably should start that other channel at some point. Or just, no, no. I'll keep this one horror. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, so this guy gets nine lives after taking on some psychotic doctor's freaking, you know, lab experiment and giving him the this gland from a cat that gives them nine lives, even though cats don't actually have nine lives. It doesn't matter. It's just a fucking story, okay? Um, <laughs> but there are so many things I could come up with off the top of my head that you could make more money on or do better with having nine lives, okay? I just... I mean, there's so many things, it's ridiculous. Especially if you know you can die and then come back. And especially once he starts dying and it takes him a longer time to come back and he's like in the morgue. Like that's the time to start like robbing a big bank and then get into a shootout with the cops and then you're dead. But then you've stashed the cash somewhere and then you can just get up and tell somebody where it is or go and get it yourself. I mean, there's... That's off the top of my head for like two seconds. Like, I'm sure I could sit down for like an hour and come up with an incredible plan. So the fact that he just goes, although he doesn't seem to be very bright and he's a drunk, you know, homeless person when they meet him. Not that all drunk homeless people are morons, but uh, yeah, I just don't, I'm not under the impression that he's all that intelligent in this episode. Um, and <laughs> I like how the, I like how the chick asks this guy out before he's about to die for the first time in front of her. I guess that's the safest bet. Like, you know, A, he's probably going to say yes because, you know, he'll be so excited when he comes back to life. He'll want to do it or like, or he'll die and, and you don't even actually have to go on the date. Uh, I don't know. But I thought that was funny that she's asking him. It's like, I better ask him now. I'm never going to get another chance if he doesn't If he doesn't actually get up. No matter if you had the ability to, you know, uh, be revived after each death, dying would always suck. There would never be a good way, especially the way he does it. But what I find stupid about this episode is the fact that most of the deaths, in, a, in addition to the fact that I just don't feel like he can make a ton of money off of, like, sideshow carnival type stuff. Like, he makes, like, 10 grand for a death. 10 grand for a death? You better be paying me a fuckload more than $10,000. But um, another silly, stupid thing for me is that he... <clears throat> the, the deaths that they do could easily be faked. Like, why even bother actually dying? If, if most of your deaths are Zoe, the electricity one, that's super easy. The hanging one, that would be super easy. The buried alive one, that would be super easy. 
I mean, people do this shit. We, we've seen this. We've seen all sorts of magicians do the buried alive one or whatever. The one in the water tank would be very hard. The fact that he has no breathing apparatus or any ability to breathe and they keep him in there for an hour in the water, which is actually the first one with the fewest amount of people watching. But all the other ones, pretty much all the other ones except for also the, the arrow through the chest. But all, I, I think, yeah, outside of that, all the other ones he does in front of an audience could be so easily faked. I just, I'm, I don't know. I would be like, uh, I need to see proof. <laughs> I need to listen to his heartbeat myself. Um, yeah, I just, I thought that was, that was really, really silly. Um, and he's way underselling himself. And plus, it seems like he has a lot more than eight lives. Spoiler, spoiler, obviously. This whole fucking thing is spoilers. He only has eight lives because the cat has one of them. That's the big ironic twist. Um, but <laughs> I just... the like It seems like he has so many more deaths in the opening because he talks about how he became a sensation. And like people were coming from all over to see him and, and, and people when they were, they were getting their tickets saying like, oh, you're back again and, and whatever. And he's talking to people like, oh, you're coming back. Like, it seems like he's already died like five times by this point, but supposedly he's, when we see him, I think die every time he dies within the, in the episode, I think we see every single one of them. And I just don't see how that's possible because of how he talks about the events unfolding. So it doesn't matter, but I was just noticing that. Um, and another thing is they don't explain in the slightest is how his body seems to be able to stay intact. Like, even though you could come back to life, uh, I don't understand how his heart repairs itself after it's been shot with an arrow or how he isn't completely mangled from being in a horrible car wreck. Like if you're going to kill yourself and, and you know you're going to be coming back, Jesus, I keep kicking my camera. It's too damn close to me. I think that's the second time I've done it in this video. Oops. Um, <laughs> but uh, if, yeah, if you are going to come back and you know you can come back, like you're not going to put an arrow through your heart. You're not going to crash a car like the water one makes sense. The, you know, the electrocution one makes sense. Those aren't cosmetically impairing. So I just, I don't know. It doesn't matter. But he's he's got like Wolverine powers as well, I guess. Um, and continued on next page. Jesus. Um, would people really want to watch this? Probably. I always say that in these, in these kinds of shows and episodes and whatnot where people are like lining up to see people tortured or this or that or do it themselves like an old lady comes up you get to drink from the fire hose name that movie um and <laughs> i guess it's easier to betray somebody if it by killing them i don't know why she had to kill him i guess because she knew it would take longer but she takes one of his lives uh, his girlfriend betrays him and stabs him in the back, literally. And I guess it's easier to betray somebody and kill them when you know they're going to uh, be able to come back to life. But I just, it was like, you couldn't have just knocked him out, like, or put the bag or just steal the money while he was gone. Like, you had to kill him? Like, that just seems, I don't know. <laughs> Especially a guy who, like, you just betrayed him and killed him. You don't think he's coming for you? And a guy who can't die? Because I don't know if she knows how many lives he has. So the, the a guy that can't die you're going to betray? That sounds really, really stupid. Although the girl in this episode is really fucking stupid. So I guess it kind of goes with it. And as is he. Uh, and then as I said, we get the little twist ending. One life has already been expended by the kitty cat. Um... But anyway, um, this is a fun episode, as stupid as it is. A lot of these episodes, you just have to take a lot of stuff with a grain of salt and suspend disbelief like a motherfucker. So anyways, on to the next episode.